Thanks for watching NTD Business. Coming up. The midterms are only two weeks away with new allegations that Google is suppressing Republican candidates. We have the details. Nancy Pelosi says Americans shouldn't focus on inflation because it's a global phenomenon. Is that the case? And Adidas ends its lucrative partnership with Kanye West over his controversial comments. What could that mean for the brand? With that and much more coming up on NTD Business. It's great to have you with us. Paul Graney here. Home prices have just slowed at the fastest pace on record. It seems higher mortgage rates are finally having an effect in the housing market. The case Schiller Price Index is a little delayed, so the latest data is for August. It shows that home prices fell a massive 9% month over month. In July, the home price index dropped for the first time in over a decade, and it's just accelerated in August. Prices in all 20 cities tracked by the index are now only up slightly year over year, a big change for what was a red-hot housing market. It seems consumer confidence is also cooling off. Soaring inflation and higher interest rates are taking their toll on Americans, it seems. This month, U.S. consumer confidence fell to its lowest level since July. This is data from the conference board, by the way. With higher interest rates, meaning larger debt repayments for many Americans, it's seeming that that's forcing them to cut back on their spending. Not to mention things are just more expensive now. And bad news for tourism. The survey found that people plan to spend less on travel over the next six months. But despite higher borrowing costs, people still seem willing to buy big ticket items like homes, cars and appliances. And while a strong jobs market has been a bright spot in the economy recently, people seem to feel the good times may not last. Fewer people say they think jobs are plentiful now. Federal Reserve is trying to slow down the jobs market, by the way. They say that will help with inflation. That claim has been disputed, though. And as the midterm elections approach, Democrat House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said we should focus less on inflation. She says it's a global phenomenon that isn't only affecting Americans. And today's Don Ma discussed Pelosi's comments with former investment banker and author of The War on Small Business, Carol Roth. Thanks for joining us, Carol. Now, Democrats argue that uh, inflation is a global phenomenon and that maybe Biden shouldn't be getting all the blame. Does this have merit for you? It's a magical global phenomenon, Don, just like it's magic that it's sunny every day everywhere around the world. No, this does not absolve Biden um, and the you know, previous administrations and the broader government for blame. First of all, um, inflation wouldn't be the way it was without this ridiculous monetary policy that we've had ongoing for like a decade and a half. And we have you know, suppressed interest rates. We've printed trillions of dollars. That happened in the U.S. and then other places around the world, Europe and the like, they followed suit. So it sort of became a vicious cycle. One would do it, then the other. It would give the, the us the, the cover to do more. It would give them the cover to do more. So just because we all printed money, it does not absolve us of the blame of doing that here. Secondly, from an energy policy, policy perspective, Biden came in and completely destroyed um, some of our energy independence and made really bad decisions around energy. And obviously that's having massive implications here. But Europe obviously as well has made the same stupid decisions on energy. And the fact is that they are not energy independent. So again, it doesn't absolve us from the blame just because they've also made stupid decisions. In fact, if we had made better decisions, we would have been able to help them out and lower their inflation. But I think that the most important piece is that we are actually exporting inflation to the rest of the world. Um, given the inflation that we've had here, the Fed has had to change their policy. They're raising rates. And basically, that is creating strength in the U.S. dollar vis-a-vis -vis other currencies. So when these currencies have to go out and buy oil and food that's priced in dollars because we're the reserve currency, it's costing them more to do so. So we have exported our inflation inflation through this strong dollar and policy to these other countries. So it's somewhat of a global phenomenon because we are creating that global phenomenon. Wow, interesting. And there's another part to this uh, argument. And I, I want to play a clip for you uh, of Nancy Pelosi talking about inflation this weekend in, in an interview. And afterwards, I, I want to get your reaction. 
it's not, the fight is not about inflation. It's about the cost of living. And if you look at what we have done to bring down the cost of prescription drugs, mm -hmm. to bring down the cost of, of energy and the rest in our legislation, you will see that there has been opposed every step of the way by the Republicans, and they have no plan for lowering the cost right. of living. Your thoughts on that? <laughs> I mean... She's delusional. Inflation is the loss of the uh, cost of living. It's the decline in your purchasing power. And all of the issues that we have been facing are very much supply side issues. If you think of something like energy, it's not the Republicans that have been putting up a barrier to traditional energy sources. This is something that Biden campaigned on. He came in day one and he canceled oil and gas leases. He shut down the Keystone pipeline. Um, you know, and whether it be how Housing or labor, you know, think about labor now. They're trying to make it harder for people to hire or companies to hire independent and gig work workers. They are creating the barriers on the supply side. That's not something that Republicans typically do. So for her to, to go around and say that, uh, you know, again, that they're not at fault and that their policies not only aren't causing this, but they could do a policy shift and completely change this is just absolute insanity. And Carol, just talk a little bit about the housing market. You, you know, prices are coming down, sales are slowing. Is the market in a recession? No, I mean, the, the prices are still elevated on a year over year basis, even though it's less so than in previous months. Um, again, <laughs> I feel like I keep repeating myself here, but this is the crux of the problem. We have a, an undersupply in housing as well. And that is part of the reason why we, we have seen these crazy high prices in housing. So as interest rates have moved up and then mortgage rates in concert have moved up, there are fewer sales, but you haven't seen that wholesale decrease in terms of the price of housing. I do think that we could come down you know, 10 or 20 percent from here, but the prices have been so elevated. I'm not sure if, if I mean, I guess it depends if you want to sensationalize that maybe that's a crash or maybe it's just coming down to a, to a better level. But there will be support for that. And as the, the market kind of goes in from its bust cycle into its boom cycle in the future, I do think there will be buyers willing to push those prices up again. All right. Thank you very much, Carol Roth, former investment banker and author of the book, The War on Small Business. Pleasure having you today. Great to be with you. Now, with the midterms only two weeks away, a new report claims that Google is manipulating search results against Republicans. The report is by the Media Research Center, or MRC, and just as a disclaimer. MRC has been described as a conservative-leaning media watchdog, and Google denies all of its claims, saying that it would never manipulate search results to disadvantage any political ideology. But the MRC says it analyzed 12 of the most important Senate races, the races that are most likely to decide which side gets power after the election. It googled each candidate's name, followed by the words Senate Race 2020. So the candidate's name and Senate Race 2022. My apologies. It found that the campaign sites for 10 of the Republicans were significantly lower on the results page compared to the Democrat opponents. MRC says seven of the Republicans' websites didn't even show up on the first page. In contrast, eight of the Democratic candidates' websites were within the first six results on the first page, by the way. One example is the Georgia Senate race between Democratic incumbent Raphael Warnock and Republican, ch Republican challenger Herschel Walker. It's a very tight race, by the way. MRC found that on the Google search, Raphael Warnock's website was number five on the first page. Herschel Walker's website, on the other hand, wasn't even on the first page. Another critical race is one in Nevada between Democratic incumbent Catherine Masto and Republican chanter Adam Laxalt. Some say the race could determine which party wins the Senate. 538 says the two are even, about as tight a race as it gets. Adam, his website is buried. His opponent's website is elevated. Uh, it's, we, but we ran identical searches, just changing the names. They should have produced the same kind of results, but they didn't. That's Dan Schneider at the Media Research Center behind the group behind the report. He told us they tried other websites as well. We did, this, did the same uh, analysis for Bing and DuckDuckGo, the two main competitors to Google. 
and Bing and DuckDuckGo are neutral. They do not you know, have biased results in favor of one party or, or, or the other. Somebody at DuckDuckGo has written the algorithm to say, if you're a Democrat or Republican running for the Senate, we're going to place your campaign website first in search results. Somebody at Google is writing the same kind of algorithms, but for Google, they're highlighting the Democrat. Tech researcher Jake Denton from the Heritage Foundation says this kind of behavior isn't limited to just Google. Since, uh, you know, the 2016-2020 election, Silicon Valley, Google, and all the other corporations that have gotten behind the left have put their hands on the scales and tried to interfere in our election. Whether it be emails hitting the spam folder, whether it be search results going to the back pages of Google, Republican candidates are at a huge disadvantage to their Democrat opponents. Again, Google denies these claims, but the Media Research Center says Congress should investigate Google's alleged search result bias and all efforts to influence the midterm elections.